little sidebar? Uh, I don't want to give them too much, uh, too much for the buck. I can't. No. I don't. I don't think they have the Mike Neighbors uh, price tag. So uh, <laughs> this is more of a Scott Falkenbridge price tag. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it's going to cost extra if you want the rest of us in on this thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We're, we're uh, live. If you're ready, we're live. We're live on Facebook right now. Oh, yeah. my, was that all live? That whole uh, thing? Just the last like minute. All right, excellent. Well, welcome everybody uh, to uh, our Facebook broadcast of Friday at four twenty. And if you're listening to this on the radio, uh, you're listening to Funny Eight Twenty. We appreciate that, and it means it's Friday afternoon, so we're getting ready for the weekend. And we've got a great edition of Friday at four twenty ready for you. Uh, I have twelve random topics in these twelve envelopes. And we are all set to uh, lay it on our panel. So let's introduce them. First and foremost, it's always my good friend, Patrick Coppolino. Buongiorno. Hey, buongiorno, <laughs> Patrick. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> Have you had any good chicken parm lately? Uh, no, but I had some uh, lasagna last night. My mom, <laughs> my mom, she always like... She'll text us and be like, uh, she's like, oh, I have three lasagnas. Can I drop one off to you? Like, she makes them, but then texts people like, I, I can't believe I have three lasagnas. I need to get rid of these. <laughs> uh, Kathy, she's... I'd be willing to take one off your hands anytime. <laughs> yeah, she'll make you one. She will. <laughs> just that now that you there. said that, she'll make you one. <laughs> Let's say hello to our, uh, also our good friend, maybe even a better friend, Manola Zantanos. He counties, Mike. Take a knee, Manolas. How are you? I'm getting better. I've had the worst. I had the worst Saturday. I went to pick up my dad at the airport to find out that you're not allowed to go in the airport because of COVID. Do you know that? No, I did not know that. I did not know that either. So I argued with the guy, and then I ended up. <laughs> so Manolas just decided he didn't like the rule, so he's going to <laughs> argue with the guy. He's 93 years old, dude. What am I supposed to do? Right? My dad's not. So you know what I did, Mike? I snuck in the airport, the Toronto oh, airport. Oh, no, yeah. No. Look at Scott's face. He's like, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this that's been... almost as that's almost as crazy as like turning around at the border and running back. Dude, I Jason Bourne did. I got in there. I went in through the outdoor where these like <laughs> like these uh, people with vests on that were like having a break, having to smoke. I, I crossed this road. I went in. I went up a floor. I'm like, holy cow, this actually worked. I'm in. I'm like, Jason Bourne did. I'm there. And then I waited like three, four hours to find out my dad uh, took the bus home to <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> he didn't tell you? He looked, he looked around. He said he didn't see me. So he got on a bus and called me. He says, hey, pick me up at Nash in Queenston. I'm like, what terminal is that? Like <laughs> Nash, <laughs> Nash and Queenston. That's like two, two city streets. You're in like I'm in Toronto. I, I was in I was in Toronto from four fifteen till seven thirty. Toronto Airport with a with a mask on, and I wasn't even supposed to be there. <laughs> so was, so Manolas, your your ninety three year old father couldn't see you and took off right away, basically. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because I was so, wearing a mask. Because right, because he didn't recognize his own son. Um, <laughs> my, que my question is: Did did you not talk to him beforehand? Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. He, you know what he said? Pick me up what? at the airport. <laughs> That's right. what he said. But he then said, you're, pick you're, me up at the airport. You're not well, there as when, soon as he lands. You just make your own rules up, you know. <laughs> oh God. He, I so when I yelled at him when I got home, he's like, "Why are you so mad?" I'm like. Do you understand what I went through? What do you mean, why am I mad? <laughs> I Your dad doesn't know who Jason Bourne is. Yeah, his, his dad doesn't know who Jason Bourne is, so that meant nothing to him. That's so funny. So uh, well, listen, his dad when, snuck when, when, out while he was sneaking in. <laughs> <laughs> it's great having you here on the show, Manolis. I hope today goes better than your Saturday. Uh, the other uh, person who already jumped in talking before he was even introduced, what the hell? Uh, please, ladies and gentlemen, he's a multiple guest on our show, and we appreciate him coming back again for another round. Mr. Scott Falkenbridge. Thank you, right. guys. Hey, did you notice that I, I got the green screen for radio? <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm prepared radio for one. anything. Any, radio any scenario. Loving what do you it. want in the background? Popcorn? I can do popcorn. 
Scott has a, uh, a green screen. I'll, I'll just fill the radio audience in. Uh, you got a green screen. You've been doing some other work here, and then you're just you're taking a break. This is like your coffee break. You jumped on with us. That's right. I I'm I'm I have a busy shooting schedule. <laughs> what they call a busy shooting schedule during a pandemic. That's how that's how busy I am. You know what? When you're shooting porn, you got like right. I mean, it's like you got to put that stuff out, man. Mike, neighbors, you see right through me. <laughs> Right. Yeah, exactly. All right, boys, let's get to our game. Uh, we'll catch up with Scotty on what he's been up to and what he's going to be up to in the near future uh, as we uh, get going here. But we got to get a topic. Scott, I have plinkoed for you. I don't know if you can see it, but the actual plinko board is right there. I actually plinkoed, and you've got number three. Topic number three on this Friday at 420 for our guest, Scott Falconbridge. Scott, an important question the world wants to know. What do you eat for breakfast? Ah, it's so simple. A toast and egg. Toast and egg. Then I hop on the bike and I go. One that's e it. One that's egg? My, that's my new routine. I'm, One I'm egg? Very... How that? many eggs? How many eggs? Just just, just the one, usually. Uh, so toast, egg, cheese, and then uh, a piece of fruit and uh then i hop on on the bike and uh that's like that's my routine that's how, my, my pandemic routine how far uh do you bike uh, do you, like do you, is, are you biking for health purposes you're not biking to go to work or something <laughs> uh, uh typically 30k i've lost uh 17 pounds since december i wasn't biking in january i was just going to the gym but uh when the pandemic started uh that wasn't any good um, so I just start, I bought a bike and I, I'm, I'm on it every day. I raced, uh, over a thousand dollars for, uh, uh, to fight kids cancer in August doing, doing the bike riding. I rode 400 K. Uh, and I just, you know, it's, it's one of my new things. It's one of my new things. That is aw first of all, awesome. And congratulations on raising that money, man. That's anytime you can do something that you love doing and can turn it into some extra good for the community is awesome. So congratulations on doing that. That's really oh, thanks. cool. You know, the best part is I get out of the house. I just want to get out of the house. <laughs> get away from your own kids. <laughs> get away yeah. from my own kids. Get away from, from everything. Uh, I have my brother-in-law lives in the basement now uh, during this pandemic. Uh, and the kids were home all the time. So, yeah, I bought a bike and I use it. <laughs> uh scott do you do you, uh do you write comedy while you're you know you're a, you're a working professional stand-up comedian do you write comedy while you're out there or, or are you just lost and just don't even want to think about anything i i went through a period where i was lost in the woods like probably most of us in the last couple months but i've kind of found a new thing i'm writing i have a uh, i have a lifelong uh disability called nail patella syndrome and i'm writing a book about dealing with that what is that uh, nail patella syndrome is a connective tissue disorder, so it affects your entire body. Uh, you're usually slightly smaller in stature, uh, so yes, that's the reason why I'm short. Uh, and uh, you, uh, yeah, kidney issues, uh, muscle issues, bone issues, uh, it, it's uh, eye issues, uh, heart disease is uh, secondary but affected. So it's basically something, and usually it was a you, you had the prospect of living five decades. Um, the meds I, I take can keep it going longer, but uh, I've always been just a little bit different because of that. And and I started to write about it for the first time. I never talked about it uh, in my stand-up. You know what's crazy? You have all that stuff going on in your life, and you look really good right now. And look yes. what the guy who had to wait at the airport for three hours looks like. <laughs> you have all those problems. Yeah. I think I, I think I have that nail persistency problem too. I think I have it. I just don't know. Yeah, like, you I have think... what's called being Manolis. Um, it it does force you. It does force you to confront stuff. Um, like I'm dis I'm a little bit more disciplined than I used to be because as I get older, it affects you more. Um, so I have to watch my blood pressure. I have to watch all those. Like I'm, I'm in a risk group during this COVID thing. How long have you like known about this all your life? All, uh, I was born with it. I was followed as a kid. Um, in fact, I was, I would say guinea pig as a kid, uh, uh just because, um, it's a rare, it's like one in 50,000 chance. Like, like your chance of getting struck by lightning is one in 
three thousand. Like this is like you're seventeen times more likely to get struck by lightning than than to have this. So uh, it's it's rare, and usually uh, the best doctors I run into go, I need to do some reading because they acknowledge that they don't really know much about it. Um, you've not told anybody this because I've never known this about you. Has, uh, has... I, 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 I never discussed it a lot, mostly because um, just the way I was raised, I was raised to like, uh, you know, you're just like everyone else and just do everything you're supposed to just do what you know, like, just, you know, don't, don't, don't mention it. Cause people will make a big deal of it. You're just like everyone else and you can do anything you want to do. And that's how, and that was a good mentality. Um, but, uh, like sometimes things come up that are tougher than, than what other people have to deal with. And so maybe I addressing it a bit more, uh, that's going to be in the book, right? That kind of stuff. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a, a book, uh, called not like the others. And it's just about how, uh, being just a, like, cause I look normal. Like there's some people who have, uh, different diseases and you can tell just by looking at them and, and um, this, this most people wouldn't know just by looking at me. Um, and so it, when I have brought it up to friends, often the reaction was, well, it can't be a big deal. You look fine. Yeah. Uh, and, and You're you, like, look at Manolas. You're fine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm just starting to deal with some of the things are more serious, the kidney disease, obviously um and like there's other <coughs> issues in our family for the people that have it that are more severe than i've had to deal with um and uh i like i won't discuss them specifically but uh it, it can have complications in terms of like the way your spine is shaped uh your muscle development upper body can be really th i was really thin as a kid so i was just you know picked on but it wasn't it wasn't something that uh it wasn't something that stopped me. I still play rugby. I still play basketball. Um, I still do things. And uh, but, but it's kind your, of a thing my whole life. So I'm starting to to to, to write about it. Your bo your boners are fine though, right? Oh yeah, uh, that that the, the, they're fine up until the fourth decade, <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> and that, that that that's just that's just general aging. <laughs> It's just, yeah. Manolis hasn't quite run into that yet, but it's coming. I, I, I love that that was Manolis' first real question. That's his main concern. <laughs> yeah, you have boners. They're around. like, you have six weeks to live, Manolis. Yeah, but can I still get boners, dude? <laughs> I, I think that's going to end up being a chapter in your book, Scotty. That's, uh, that's super interesting <laughs> stuff. It, it takes us to a different place than what did you have for breakfast doesn't seem as an important question anymore. Oh, my God, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, that was that. the question. That was the question. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm oh, fighting no. for my life. Thanks, Mike. No, we love it, man. But I got to find out from the other guys because we got to stick with the game. <laughs> Patrick, can you top that? What did you have for breakfast? <clears throat> well, my family has a long history of cancer, Mike. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 you hurt me. Um, I, I usually don't eat breakfast. There was a phase where I was every day, eggs, bacon, um, toast or bagels stuff like that uh now it's just like what's in my fridge so i told you i had lasagna last night for dinner so guess what i'm having for breakfast today would you eat breakfast like first thing when you get up or do you usually have to be up for no. a while before you'll have anything to eat i gotta be up for a while so usually by the time i'm eating breakfast it's like three in the afternoon Okay, so uh, most people call that lunch <laughs> whatever but we'll go with breakfast uh manolis what about you well i did talk to doctors also and uh <laughs> They said there's there's nothing they can do for me. I'm just slow. So I was born with it, and uh, I don't know how to spell. I like I like to I like not every day. I like to I like first thing I like to do is I like to take a microdose of mushrooms as soon as I wake up, because your stomach's nice and empty. You get that get that uh, you know psilocybin turning into serotonin and like you know making me happy for the day, and then uh, maybe an egg. Uh, I definitely don't get on a bike uh, and um, shot a rye. And then uh, and that's about it. That's that's uh, the what we call that the breakfast of champions. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe pull one off and then uh, I'm good for the day. You know, <laughs> all right, let's uh, 
<laughs> can I just can I just cut in for one second? You know what Absolutely. bothers me the most about what Manolo's just said is that he'll probably like his dad live till ninety three. <laughs> That's right. I probably will. I probably it's a it's not a good thing, Mike. It's a curse. <laughs> All right, Manolo, it's just topics for you on Friday at 420 with our special guest, Scott Falconbridge. Uh, Manolo, do you know your Zodiac sign? Uh, no. I think I, I never saw the movie, and I don't know what that – I don't know what it is. Is, is this something to do with stars? Yes, yes. Okay. I am Cancer. Okay. So what does that mean? Do you, do you, do you know, know – you, you have any idea what that means, what, what, what kind of personality traits fall within the realm of a Cancer? Uh, I know uh, I'm on the last day of cancer, too. So they say I'm like cancer Leo. Right. Um, I think I don't know. I think I, th I think cancers are supposed to be. I don't know. I think a nice guy. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> that, that's the Not, personality trait. They're, they're good yeah. people. I think I think they're good people. I don't know. They're, I, I think we're sensitive. I think I've heard that. You know what? Your, your Leo is comes in there. Yeah, so when you're on the last day, you really are a combination of the two. And I will tell you, because I'm a Leo, and Leos are really sensitive. Uh, we can be great leaders. We can be very arrogant sometimes. But we are also super sensitive, and and, uh, and that is a Leo trait. Yeah. Sensitive, does that make you irritable, though, would you say? like some? I find, like, sometimes I'm really I'm really chill. Everybody's like, I'm not such a nice guy. But if you, like, uh if I find if I get lipped off the wrong way, I just get I get really uh, angry. You know? Yeah, You're some of the most irritable comics I know are, you know, they're known as being complete, you know, a holes. But uh, it's because they're sensitive; they get upset. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, your rage comes from your cancer side, dude. Yeah. Uh, Scott Falconbridge, do you know your zodiac sign, brother? Uh, I know I'm like Gemini. I'm born on the border of Gemini and whatever comes after Gemini, I think. I think it's Taurus, yeah. I think it's Taurus. So I, I guess I'm a mix, too. I don't really know. Um, you guys don't pay attention to that? Uh, you know what? I I, 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 I never, understood, <laughs> never understood why Zodiac was such a big deal. Uh, um, I, I found it very entertaining because we used to have this woman called JoJo in Montreal who would come on TV and tell everyone their Zodiac signs and uh, but no, I like I, I'm told I'm told uh, that I have tr both traits. Um, OK, yeah, it's you know, what's interesting. And, and, and uh, you know, I'm not uh, certainly I don't fully understand it. But uh, what is interesting is that if you look into the zodiac sign that you are or a cusp person, which would be the two zodiacs. Right. Um, it's a, it's pretty it's pretty cool that it actually will there be things that you go holy crap that is me that you know I mean there is there's so there's something there I don't know what it is but that you definitely will find that you fall that there, you have traits that fall within that uh, Patrick Capolino has lost interest he's playing poker now um, <laughs> he's got a side poker going on the uh, uh, other I'm, screen I'm preparing I'm looking at my zodiac oh you, know, you don't even know what it no is. I I'm Scorpio but I'm looking up the traits <laughs> oh okay. Do you, do you find any are you a Scorpio tra uh, do you any traits there so far? I'll read them. Passionate, yes. Persistent, <laughs> yes. Strategic, yes. And and there's like there's there's things besides so beside passionate it says controlling. <laughs> beside persistent it says obsessive. Strategic it says secretive. Beside loyalty it says vengeful. Uh, fearlessly curious, yes. Uh, curious. Forming a cult. Like, how can you not be one of those things? <laughs> like, like everyone here is probably at least two or three of those things. Yeah, there it's it like is. A shopping list. This there is what is. you are. Oh, I found three of them. Oh, this is this well, is amazing. Well, that's what I, every time I if I see like a horoscope, but a curiosity, uh, you know, you want to read it, and then if even if it like kind of links up to you, you're like, oh my god, sure. that is happening in my life. But then it's like, yeah, <laughs> me and the millions of other Scorpios are all going through this exact same thing. Right. Oh, you're you know what I mean? Bunking it? This is like this is like the wind. It's see through. You can't explain it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't okay, understand. Okay, listen, it. we'll move on. You guys have all poo pooed zodiac signs. Whatever. <laughs> I know uh, these two negative it, Nancy's Mike, here. Is that your thing? Are you a zodiac guy? I'm really into it, man. Uh, <laughs> Are you really? <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, 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 and, and Scott's right. I, you know, you look at so the list. Sorry. And, 
And what you do is you turn those things into yourself, right? I mean, you right. read 10 things and you kind of go, oh, look, seven of them are me. But you're, you're, you're absolutely right. How does that, everybody who was born in July, how are they all the same? They're not, they're not all the I, same. So, I'm, I don't care. I believe it. I'm into it. So, all right. Yeah. It's, it's, handy when, it's just handy when you're hitting on the ladies. It was a new moon last night, Mike. Yes, you know it was. That? And Mars yes, it is Mars is in Gatorade again soon. <laughs> Mars is in Gatorade. I didn't know that. Boys, uh, a stand-up comedy question for you now on this Friday at 420. We'll start with you, Patrick Coppolino. I know you guys have all been out performing in clubs since we went through lockdown. Um, and and we, we, we've talked a little bit about the fact that, you know, uh, fewer people, um, just a different vibe altogether. But here's what I want to know. Have, do you have a sense that audiences are different, that they're, you know, either more receptive, they're more anxious to just be laughing and having a good time because they've been through so much crap? Uh, talk to me a little bit about what you've seen so far from the stage as far as audiences go post-COVID. Patrick, you can start. Uh, well, yeah, like at Levity, we've had three or no four weekends now and uh levity i'm not i'm not familiar uh, with levity, levity comedy that? levity comedy club and lounge downtown hamilton who's headlining there this week uh scott falconbridge is headlining this weekend and Stop and it. tonight's amateur night and two for one wing night come for the wings and maybe stay for the comedy <laughs> i'm glad i got i got top billing over the chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> we also have chicken wings for scott's show but they're they're full price um <laughs> <laughs> they'll be there signing his but, new book but the the crowds have been awesome and you want like but like uh their reaction to the shows aside even um one thing we've noticed because our capacity is super limited but uh but they've been very more, they're more generous people are, that are going out to businesses are actually kind of making a point of spending more money there and they're tipping more too so like no complaints from <laughs> from the staff so far, but uh, but performance wise, yeah, I think the shows have been great. I think you can obviously tell people have been starved of entertainment and they're just in a better mood just because they're out with their friends and they're doing something. So that element alone helps the show. So I think there's been a, a positive uh, reaction since since everything's opened up again. That's awesome, Scotty. How, how have you felt? Uh, I know you've been out doing a couple of shows, and you're going to be doing them this weekend at Levity. It's uh, how have you felt? Is there a different a sea change in, in how people are approaching this? Or sure. So like before before uh, COVID, uh, if you looked at your weekend, typically Thursday night would be a night where maybe your numbers are lower, but the people that come on a Thursday really want to be there, right? Because they made the effort to do it, even though they got to work the next day. And I've always found Thursday crowds to be like small but generous. And I feel like mm -hmm. right now every day is Thursday when you're doing a comedy club. Because like the Friday and Saturday, like there are people there because they want to be at a comedy show, and there are people there because it's Friday or Saturday. And so sometimes the the focus on oh I just want to be generous and laugh, and I'm really here to support the, the performers. Sometimes you get more of that on the night where people don't show up in huge numbers. And I feel like it, it's an extension of what Pat is saying, but but it's basically like every night is Thursday night. Those people really want live comedy. It's great. Yeah, exactly. That is awesome. That is that is awesome. And and it just, you know, when, when the audience is like that and they're receptive and they want to be into it and the comic is feeding off of that, then just everybody just has so much better time, right? Oh, for sure. In fact, like sometimes when you have a crowd so good, uh, about halfway through your set, you start to think, how can I mess this up? Like, how can I... this is this is too good? Uh, uh, I, I've I've, I've got to have a bad moment somewhere. And and I had like I, I performed at a, a Burlington Yucks last Thursday. Sorry, Pat had to mention it uh, <laughs> uh, last Saturday. And it felt like halfway through my set, I was like, this is uh, someone's gonna have to wake me up. Like I'm not sure this is real or not. So. Um, it's actually been kind of dreamy so far. Uh, you know what? Uh, just a, a pro tip here, though. But if you want to figure out how to mess it up halfway through a show, bring up your life-altering disease. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I thought we got some comedy out of it. <laughs> we did make it fun of Manola. It was gold, man. Don't worry. <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, I wrote 15 minutes for this weekend on that. <laughs> you don't like it? <laughs> He was, he was I, testing it. I had to take my shot, man. Uh, Manoli! <laughs> Manoli! Yes. Stay with us, buddy. How have the audiences been, pal? 
I, I would agree with everything everybody's saying. I did like last Wednesday at Levity was actually a tough crowd. I was like surprised and I was just, just got by, you know, and just getting by is, as for a comedian is just not good enough. But besides that one show, they've all been still like um, just great in the sense of like, too, like I think sometimes uh, the audience doesn't even understand how important they are. Like, and like, and I mean, like, they they give up their like we're entertaining and trying to make them laugh we're entertaining them but the, the reality is we need them more than they need yeah. us like if if comedy end they're gonna be fine we're not you know what i mean like we need to do this so like like it's uh it's it's i love it like I, the other week uh scott was uh doing the absinthe remember that i guess you of course you remember yes that. I, I did it twice and um, but I remember though you had this uh, vibe. I'm mean, like, I think it was the first time you're like, I don't know about this. You know what I mean? Like, because it was outside. Like, yeah, it, it was outside. Also, because you were standing way too close to me. But that's <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. You saying I don't know about this. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and he, and then you could see it in his face. Like it's like, it's it, it looks like it's not going to work because it's everybody spread out. It's outside. It doesn't sound great. And you'd think it was an inside club show. Like, it sounded so good. It was so cool. And the vibe is so awesome, you know? So, yeah. I mean, I guess the one thing, good thing about COVID is people care more when they get yeah. that opportunity to listen to comedy. You know what I noticed, too? I think, like, a, a, a little bit of reverse of, like, the audiences were starved for entertainment. But also, I think this break for comedians has been good because everyone's kind of gotten out of autopilot mode. You know, because when they're doing it all the time, like I, I felt that for me anyways, like just getting up, it felt it felt new again. It was exciting. I could tell even like stuff I've told a million times. I'm telling it differently now because it's been so long. And I think that was refreshing. I think in turn, the comics are actually giving a better performance now <laughs> than than when everything was still going, you know? Oh, for sure. I, I spent a week rehearsing for, for my one Saturday show. I was probably more prepared than most galas. <laughs> yeah. And... <laughs> Part, I, 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 during this pandemic, I worked at a senior's residence for a while, and it went about as well as you can imagine a comic working in a senior's residence. Um, but uh, it really made me go, I, there's a reason why I do comedy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Did you, had you ever had a, a break as long from doing it, Scott, since you started doing it? Have you ever had a break as long as you had during COVID or uh, like a time when you were away from it that long? Honestly, <laughs> you know, and you know, the, the most, the, the longest break I'd say that I had would be like a week or two uh, of not doing stand up. And then, you know, you feel rusty that, that first set. And then maybe the second set, you remember a couple more lines than you, you, you had. And by the end of the weekend, you've, you've worked the muscle enough to, to bring it back. And so that's the longest. So I was, uh, when I started going over my longer set about two weeks ago, I had to like I, I had to spend at least three days trying to remember all the little directions I go just just to get it you know back in shape. Uh, that is uh, it, it is an amazing thing and, and you know and I, I love to hear that the audiences are really into it and uh, we hope everybody uh, get your tickets early because uh, the shows at Levity are restricted to the number of people who can be there. Uh, we want you to come out and see Scott Falconbridge this uh, Friday and Saturday night. It's going to be a, a, an awesome night. And uh, as Patrick mentioned in his uh, wonton plug, uh, amateur night is tonight. Tonight. Uh, of course, if you're listening to this on the radio, that was like two days ago. Forget it. Also, I only have two weeks to live, so you should come out and see. <laughs> It'll be in my book. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but he can still get boners. All right. <laughs> Topic number nine on this Friday at 420 with our good friend Scott Falconbridge. Uh, it is uh, funny 820 that you're listening to on a Friday afternoon, and we appreciate you doing that. Uh, we're going to go around the horn real quick. I just need to know where is the best pizza? Where is the – and I, you can go anywhere in the world, anywhere you've had. Where is the pe – you got one – you only have two weeks to live. you got to get yourself a, a slice of the best pie. Where are you going? Uh, we'll start with you, uh, Patrick. Uh, well, locally, honestly, there's this place called uh, Queen's Pizza on Queen Street, and it's good for a few reasons. A, it's right around the corner from my house, and I still make them deliver it. 
<laughs> but it's actually like it's surprisingly good. Like when you look at it, it's beside a convenience store. You don't think it's going to be very good. It's it's excellent pizza. So that I'd say that or uh, uh, also uh, Roma pizza if you want a different kind of pizza. Oh, with the classic Roma. Yes, Ham- Hamilton yes. staple. I was surprised you didn't go with uh, you know Levity Comedy Club. Uh, yeah. Levity Comedy Club does not sell pizza. Really? Well, we. You, I mean, we can make it happen for Anchor Bar if you want, but yeah, Good Anchor job. Bar's pizza Good is job. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because I know Anchor Bar serves. Like, I love oh, the yeah. pizza. At Anchor Bar. It's... I was blown away for a place that's supposed to be the wing place. They have yeah. freaking outstanding pizza. Yeah, and so I thought you could get that up in the club, yeah. but apparently well, you can't, you, Scotty. Sorry. Ask, ask for the manager. I'll, I'll make it happen. <laughs> okay, awesome, uh, Matt Manolis, best piece of pizza pie ever. First thing I'm going to need is a time machine. And then I'm going to go back into 1990, 91 and go to McDonald's and get a McDonald's pizza. <laughs> there is, pizza. there's still, there, apparently there's one McDonald's. That there's still one McDonald's pizza. in the States. You know, I think it's Ohio. Uh, yeah. There's one guy who would refuse to give it up. And he's he, the one owner of a McDonald's keeps McPizza on the menu. And he's a legend in my eyes. <laughs> Was it that good? I don't remember ever having it. So I used to get it all the time. I loved it. That and surprise. Yeah. It didn't make sense, but it, it worked. And he just did it. He didn't ask <laughs> oh. questions. Uh, Scott Falconbridge, are you a pizza guy? Yeah, I am. And uh, just on a Guelph line in Burlington, there's uh, a Greek restaurant that makes pizza called All of Us. Uh, this place has been busy during the pandemic. They only do takeout now. Uh, and uh, the food is amazing. One of the things they do is a mo- almost Montreal-style pizza. The guy who, who makes it originally from Montreal, and there's something about the dough and uh, the way he puts it together. It tastes exactly like some of the good pizza in Montreal, all of us uh, on, on Guelph Line. All of us on Guelph Line. There you go. There's your choices for pizza pie. If you need to get one, uh, you know, grab something quick to eat before you go to the show this Friday or Saturday night. With Scott Falconbridge at Levity Comedy Club. Go to levitycomedyclub.com for your tickets. Uh, topic number six. This one we're going to go to, uh, to uh, you know what? Uh, actually, I, I'd be interested in Scott's answer to this question. Uh, Scott, we're going to start with you. Uh, you are uh, married, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, uh, do, so the question is, do, would, would you do better with a funny person or someone who laughs at your jokes as far as being in a relationship. And you can just uh, let us know uh, with regards to your wife. Is she a terrifically funny person or does she just think you're terrifically funny and that's what makes the relationship work? What makes the relationship work is that she's both. But I can I can tell you that uh, what immediately attracted uh, me to her was that I guess she was laughing at my jokes because we were in a comedy club and I was performing and I heard her laugh from the back of the room. And it, it, there was a distinct ring to it. And I found, and when I walked to the back of the room after my set, I, I saw where she was sitting and I saw that she knew people I knew. So, and I sort of got someone to introduce me. So I basically, it was all based on the fact that I heard her laugh. That's what I was like, that person gets I- me. I want, I want to keep. I want to keep hearing that the rest of my life. Yes. Yeah, I want. To, I need to hear that the rest of my life. I think we left the bar that night at three in the morning. Wow. We, we talked on. So we met in a comedy club, uh, and it was basically uh, what. What I first noticed was was that she was laughing throughout my set. So you know, on some level, she got me. Uh, but she's also really funny. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Patrick, what about you? Uh, somebody who laughs at you or somebody who makes you laugh? Uh, I'd agree with what Scott said. Pretty much <laughs> the same thing. A lot of people, uh, especially people that talk to Lindsay at the bar at Levity, um, she's the bartender there, they all argue right. that she's funnier than me, and they think that she <laughs> she writes my jokes and stuff. So, um, <laughs> yeah. She's got great sense of humor. But I think, but I think both are important. But if she didn't find me funny, that would be terrible for me. <laughs> I couldn't handle that. I don't know why she'd be with me if I didn't make her laugh. Well, that's I, like I, all I, I have, that, Mike. That's, that really that's is. all I have going for me. She's laughing right now, listening to me say this. Pat, let me ask you something. Do you ever have this? You ever have uh, uh, 
a, a line that she comes up with that you use in your act and everyone gets mad at you because it's it's like why did you write that line about your wife but your wife wrote the line have you ever or your partner wrote the line have you ever had that oh no not really uh but yeah. she's there's been a few like you know dan peters she's she's yeah. given him a few uh <laughs> a few tags when he was more active doing comedy and they were like the only jokes he would get laughs for <laughs> so i don't know how that made him feel <laughs> that is funny man uh, Manolis, I, I know you're not currently with somebody. Uh, my hand. <laughs> well, are you better with a hand that laughs at you or a hand that makes you laugh? <laughs> my hand just wants to throw up, dude. Oh, wow. uh, I, uh, I like, I like a girl that laughs, but, uh, I do. I, I, funny is also important, but not like, it's not, it's more like interesting slash funny. You know, you want, because, uh, I always, I always say is lo love is wanting to stay after you come. You know what I mean? Like, you you want what? love is – like, after don't, you – Don't say it again. We're on the radio. You, after you release <laughs> – Thank you. After you Clean release, for me. the initial f feeling of most men is that, like, I got to get out of here, you know? <laughs> And the, and my life threatening disease is the worst thing that's yeah. been on this show. Also, so far. we'd like to clarify that that uh, that thought is reflected only by Manolis, not the radio station or the show. Uh, <laughs> he said his uh, his statistic of most men in that moment think I got to get out of here. <laughs> most men. If it's a one night stand, if it's some girl that is kind of getting to know, or it's just it's new. And they think like they're not. That's when that's the moment they realize if they're really into this girl or not. Because once you have that release, you're like, there's that's the main thing that wanted you to be there in the first place, and you're done. And then you're like, oh, I, I'm like you. You look at this girl without the eyes of sex, and you're like, oh wait, I love you. I still want to be here, and that's love. You know, somehow when you explain it, it just gets worse. <laughs> Welcome to my world, Scotty. Dude, dude, Scott, listen, man, I'm writing a book. <laughs> it's called After You Release. It's called, it's called Re Release and Reload. Uh -huh. Oh, all right. Listen, guys, uh, we got we to gotta tie a bow around this thing because it's been spectacular. Uh, <laughs> let's go uh, uh, quickly around the horn for some final thoughts, and we'll start with you, Scotty. Uh, talk to me just a little bit about uh, this weekend, Levity Comedy Club. You're playing Friday, Saturday night. Um, what I mean, obviously, COVID has had a bit of an impact. Is there some COVID material, if you call it that, or is there some stuff that you've witnessed during COVID that is, you're going to share with the audience on on Friday and Saturday night at Levity Comedy Club? Yeah, I think you always have to have a little bit of current in in, in your act, and yeah, so that's definitely come up already and stuff that I'm doing, uh, but you also just want to get back to normal. So like, uh, it, it, it's, it's a mix of both. And uh, I, I don't think Patrick will be displeased unless I talk for 20 minutes about so your diseases. My diseases. <laughs> That's fine. All right, me. Scott, how do we follow you on uh, social media? We got to get everybody following you on the social media. At Scotty the Comic on Twitter uh, and uh, just Scott Falkenbridge on Facebook and uh, at Scotty the Comic on Instagram. Love catching up with you, brother. Thank you so much for doing this. That has been awesome. We really look forward to the book because I think you have some cool insights you'll, you'll uh, to share with people uh, about uh, just going through something that's a little bit different, right? Right, right. I promise never to talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> That was this great. Is wow, Imagine. This is why I saved it for your show. I, I appreciate that, man. Burn on you I walked know. all over me. Imagine after this is the first time he opened up about it. That's the reaction he got. He actually stops writing the book. <laughs> it never like, Go to hell, we just Scott. crushed his dream. Well, you think you're better than us? <laughs> I'm so, I'm Scott, he's never coming back, is he? Uh, Patrick Coppolino, uh, Levity Comedy Club. Yeah, big Levity. night, big weekend coming up. Big weekend coming up. Uh, LevityComedyClub.com. Follow us on uh, social media at Levity Comedy Club. And, uh, and also follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Patchco89. That's where I play uh, poker and, uh, and other video games because that's my goal 
uh, in life now. I want, as soon as I, I'm almost affiliate, then I can start getting subscribers. And once I start getting paid doing Twitch, uh, Levity Comic Club, we're going to close it. And I'm just going to play video games. The sky's the limit, buddy. <laughs> uh, for sky. those who don't know, and we, wow. and we mentioned this on the previous show, Nolas has been staking Patrick in these uh, more expensive poker games. You guys have had your first one, so Manolas <laughs> put the money up. Uh, it was a 55 U.S. buy-in, and you guys ended up, you ended up, uh, you guys, Patrick, you ended up winning $195, so you guys, like, quadrupled your money. Uh, and this is going to continue once a month, right? And then you yeah. stream the whole thing live on, on, on Twitch, because watching Patrick play poker, that's exciting. That's entertainment <laughs> for four hours. <laughs> yeah, please come see me do comedy before they turn it into a poker house. <laughs> Scott's all in. Please go see him do comedy. Manolas, what do you got to say? Your last thoughts? Uh, my last so thoughts. Uh, my buddy owns a store called Sealed Art. So they frame uh, pictures or, like, you can buy frames or you can, like, buy get sealed, pictures sealed to wood. It's on Main and Gage. Uh, they've been there for years. Good friends with mine. Go check it out. It's an awesome store. What's the name of it? Sealed Art. Sealed Art. Art. Excellent. Uh, all right, fellas, thank you so much for another fun edition of Friday at 420. Thank you to all of you watching on Facebook. We appreciate you checking us out. And if you're listening on Funny 820, thank you for being fans of Friday at 420. We certainly appreciate it. And until we get a chance to talk to you again in seven days, have an awesome weekend! Woo!